1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, you're very welcome to the Lightweight Boxing Show. And this week we are in Bolton, a place of work for yourself, Anthony. You spend a few days of, of your week here, don't you, with Joe? I do, yes. I've uh, certainly over the years and even now here a few times a week with Joe and the team, Scott Quick as well, my old teammate. Yeah. So, yeah, never far away from this place. Well, we're going to catch up with some of the faces from the gym as well. But first, we're going to start with Katie Taylor because it is another big fight week and it's another... Yep. Women's fight headlining again, so uh, again, we're going to catch up with yeah. Natasha Jonas in a bit and talk about the strength of the women's game, but Katie headlining in London again against an Argentinian opponent, it does show the strength of the game, doesn't it? It does. We've said it for a bit, our women's side is becoming very equal to the men's, yeah. and I think just a few weeks back at the O2, we was both there, wasn't we? What an amazing event. Yeah. But again, I mean, listen, it's, it's a little bit different with Katie, but Katie's a superstar. Yeah. So she's always worthy of, I was, I was lucky enough to be there that night in Madison Square Garden. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see her back over on these shores and yeah, against an unbeaten opponent in uh, Carvajal. Listen, we don't know too much about her, but she's undefeated in 19, I think it is. I think she's coming up her weight. One thing we do know about Argentina is they normally come in the, the teak tough, but uh, we look forward to it. Yeah, this one's at Wembley Arena. Uh, what else yeah. stands out on the card for you? On the card, I really like the Jordan Gill Kiko Martinez yeah. fight because it's we know Jordan he, Gill's got lovely years skills. Of age, Kiko Martinez, now, yeah, isn't he? But I you think still he was, know what he brings. Yeah, he's sixty-four yeah. in um, October. You know what? What is what yeah. it says on the tin? He's coming. He's non-stop. He's relentless. He's very, very heavy-handed, and it can never be ruled out. Like the amount of times they're having the same oh, Kiko, like surely it can't go on forever, but. And this might be the weekend where age finally catches up with him, and Jordan Gill's too sharp, but then. Also, you know, if he catches anyone on the chin at that weight, there's a great chance they'll go over. So that makes it fa real fascinating. Ellie Scott now, uh, Romero, that's a good fight. Another good women's fight. I think yeah. that's sort of a call me in with Jordan Gill, Kiko Martinez. We've obviously got the big fella around it, Romford Bolt at the Romford Army there. At Wembley on Saturday night, they'll be out in numbers. And yeah, some other good fights on the card. Well, ahead of this fight, we, we did catch up with Eddie Hearn as well, the chairman of Matchroom Boxing, Matchroom Sport, in fact. And uh, as well as that, of course, it's the usual fight week. I want to talk to you about the return of Katie Taylor. I mean, obviously, it's been a, a rough few weeks for boxing, and I think she's the kind of perfect uh, remedy for that. She's, she's a shining light for the sport. The night at Madison Square Garden was one of the greatest nights I think the sport has ever seen. You know, people within that arena, the Madison Square Garden, saying... This was our greatest night when you talk about Ali Frazier, you know, so many incredible nights before them. And she's got a tough fight. You know, Cara Harbo is mandatory challenger. She's 19 and 0, undefeated. And often in this situation, people just presume that Katie Taylor will breeze through these kind of challenges. But I think it's going to be a, a really good fight. And she's as motivated as ever to continue to dominate the sport. Um, what, what made you target um Cara Bahal for her like you say unbeaten it's like on paper it's a really tough test after after fighting someone like Serrano what made you guys gravitate towards that fight just just because really of a mandatory challenger situation you know owning all those belts you have to box off all these mandatory challenges I'm glad we got a proper challenge because sometimes you're all to a fighting opponent that you know unfortunately it's not my decision and we'll end up getting a blame for it this is quite a good example where someone has earned a shot at a title. You know, she's gone through those those 19 victories and is, is ready to fight for a world title. And, the, you know, the difficulty for Katie is that a lot of these fighters will get in a position to fight her and really raise their game. Because And the danger is that Katie might not raise her game because it's a fight that, you know, people are expecting her to win. So when she fought Amanda Serrano, oh, she was absolutely fired up. She had the camp of her life. You know, she she couldn't have done any more. In this instance, luckily, Katie is always motivated, but sometimes can you raise the levels that you need to against fighters that you're expected to beat comfortably? And on the flip side, Cara Bajo is thinking, wow, one win and I've beaten the legend of the sport and I'm undisputed champion. I've changed my life forever. So she's going to be very hungry. It's going to be a tricky fight. And obviously, 
big big night in London. The undercard's great as well. Can you just mm. talk us through what can what can fans expect and yeah, what are you I mean, excited about? My favourite fight of the card is without doubt Kiko Martinez against Jordan Gill. You know, I mean, this is a fight that really should headline. Kiko Martinez is just that little B that won't go away. You know, you keep sort of swatting him and, you know, you, you get him on the floor. You know, when they look on the floor and you think, oh, that's a goner. And next thing, it's back buzzing around your ear again. You know, he, he's when you look at the when even when people said Kiko Martinez is done, you know, and he fought Kid Galahad and he got his ears boxed off for six or seven rounds. And then he knocked him clean out in that fight, became world champion. He came back. He had a brilliant fight with Josh Warrington. You know, Warrington won the fight, but in the process, had his jaw busted you know, and and a lot of other damage physically as well. Kiko Martinez is a horrible, horrible fighter to face. And Jordan Gill will outbox Kiko Martinez in the early stages of his fight, but Kiko will not stop coming forward. Jordan Gill's win last time out against Gwerthy when he had both eardrums burst and had to sit against the ropes because he couldn't stand up and landed that one-punch KO. It was one of the greatest victories I've ever seen. And this fight will be a tremendous fight. It's It's an eliminator for the IBF world title. The return of the Romford Ball, of course, and about two and a half thousand fans from Romford coming up to light up the Wembley Arena. Always exciting and entertaining. Ellie Scottney fighting the European champion, Mary Romero. You know, women's boxing obviously on fire at the moment. It's a really good fight that will take Ellie to the world title if she can win that fight. Gary Cully in his first fight as a matron fighter against an undefeated Frenchman in a very tough fight as well. Loads of action on, on the undercard as well. And as I said, top to bottom, really good card in Wembley on Saturday. And obviously, Katie won't be looking past Saturday because that's generally not how fighters operate. But obviously, in your capacity as a promoter, are you already thinking of next steps for Katie? Um, I sat down with Chantel Cameron last week. She wants to fight. Um, is, is a Serrano rematch something you're looking for? What does 2023 look like for Katie Taylor? Uh, I mean, Chantel Cameron has, has got a huge fight coming up, and that's another unbelievable fight against Jessica McCaskill in Abu Dhabi for the undisputed 140 pound title. If she wins that, you'd have Katie undisputed at 135, Chantel undisputed at 140. That could be a huge fight. Of course, the fight that Katie's got her eye on, we all have, is the Amanda Serrano rematch. You know, even though Katie won the fight, it was a close fight. It was one of the best fights anyone's ever seen. And we want to do that again at Croke Park. You know, we want to do that um, next spring, summer. And I think if, if Katie can get through on Saturday night, we'll hopefully open talks with Team Serrano and try and get that fight made. Um, you touched upon it there. Amazing card coming up in Abu Dhabi after this one. Um, just talk us through that card a little bit and why fans should tune in or travel to see that one. Probably one of the best cards we've put together top to bottom. I mean, firstly, Dimitri Bivo against Zerdo Ramirez is one of the best fights for boxing. You know, the WBA Light Heavyweight World Championship Bivol now pound for pound star after defeating Canelo Alvarez. Zerdo's unbeaten in what 36 fights or something like that. Former uh, world super middleweight champion as well. Co-main event for that fight, the undisputed 140 pound world championship between Chantel Cameron and Jessica McCaskill. Unbelievable fight. Zelfa Barrett from Manchester, you know, unbeaten star, gets his opportunity to become world champion against Rakimov. It's a brilliant, brilliant fight. You've got Galau Yafai, the Olympic champion. You've got Cal Yafai. You've got Campbell Hatton. You've got so many more on there that I've probably forgotten as well. But November 5th, if you're anywhere near Abu Dhabi or you get the chance to be there, be there at the Etihad Arena. And if not, tune in live on the zone because that is going to be a fantastic night of boxing. I spoke to him yesterday and he's the, he's the sort, he's one of them fighters that I think would just literally fight anyone you put in front of him. Um, but is perhaps a rematch with Canelo something that's in your thoughts now that Canelo has took care of his business with Triple G? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a fight that Canelo Alvarez wants. You know, he wants to avenge that defeat. For Bivol, yeah, th- you know, that's an interesting fight. It's a big money fight. He's also got one eye on the undisputed uh, championship in the division. Um, but, you know, I think that Canelo Alvarez and Eddie Reynoso will be watching carefully next week to see if Dimitri Bivol can win. Obviously, they probably want Zerdo to win, being Mexican. But they've definitely got one eye on the fight. And I think if Dimitri Bivol is victorious... It will definitely open talks between Canelo Alvarez and Dimitri Bivol for Cinco de Mayo next year. And a fight that that everyone's been talking about recently, not always for the best recent uh, reasons. I just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Tyson Fury going in with with Derek Chisora for a, a third fight. What what's your view as a promoter on that fight? I mean, it's difficult because Derek's my mate, 
you know, but I've obviously seen the the uh, the response from the public who are very disappointed about the fight. I think because he's beaten him twice already. It's a very it's a hard sell in that respect. I mean, if you're looking at it just as a guy that you know, Tyson Fury was always going to pick an easy fight for December third, right? In you know, ultimately, and and that was going to be Manuel Char, but it was met with such disdain from from the social media uh, community that they went for Derek Chisora. And I think if if uh, he hadn't beaten him twice convincingly already, then you know, two Brits, you would have understood that pick but I think because it's an unwanted trilogy if you like that people were very disappointed with that fight but you know Del Boy always shows up he's coming off the back of a good victory against Pulev and he'll, he'll, he'll give it everything in that fight if, if you had to guess do you think that's that's selling out Tottenham Stadium uh, I mean I think they they said they'd sold 50,000 already so I, I think so I mean Tyson Fury's a big name you know people know who Derek Chisora is it's a bit of a weird one, December 3rd with no roof, but us Brits are a bit crazy and probably think that's quite funny, so we'll go anyway. And, uh, you know, I think they'll probably, I don't know what the undercard is. They'll need a strong undercard. I mean, I don't think it's going to smash pay-per-view records, but, you know, it could have been a lot worse. You know, I think if he would have fought Manuel Char, then, you know, maybe no one would have turned up. But Derek's a big name within his own right. And um, Tyson Fury's a huge star. And you said before that you felt like Tyson was always going to take an easy fight on December, uh, December 3rd. In your, your view, was there always that feeling that the, the AJ fight just wasn't realistic and that, yeah. that on Fury's side, they weren't serious about it? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm sure that there's blame on every side for in some element of why that fight didn't speedily uh, go through. But if you have any brain in your head, not you, by the way, but anybody listening to this... <laughs> then understand this. We were given a deadline okay, of a, a day where the fight had to be signed because Tyson Fury wanted to move forward and know who he was fighting on December 3rd. Four weeks later, he signed the Derek Chisora fight. So, And all throughout that process, by the way, he was negotiating with Derek Chisora. So why were we put on a deadline yet Derek Chisora had three or four weeks more to make his decision and sign a contract than we did? That's all you need to know. On AJ, can you let us in on anything that's that's in the pipeline for, for Anthony Joshua? Obviously, a lot of talk yeah, about who is next. Yeah, I think it's more, more realistic to be fighting early next year. I mean, I just got asked a question about Gerald Washington. I mean, Gerald Washington said he's negotiating a fight. We've not had one conversation with Gerald Washington. I have absolutely no idea where that's coming from. And we're not fighting Gerald Washington. Sorry, not Gerald Washington, Chris Ariola. Um, so from there, I, I think... The fight is is Dillian White against Anthony Joshua. I mean, Dillian White has his own tough fight November 26th against Jermaine Franklin. But I don't think AJ wants an easy fight. I think he realises every camp's hard, every fight's hard. He'd rather be in the biggest fight available. And obviously, we're working with both guys. That's a fight that could get made maybe for February or March of 2023. So we'll see if Dillian White can beat Jermaine Franklin. And, and that could be next for AJ. And another situation that I've the whole boxing world talking. Um, I just wanted to sort of get an update on where things are now. Is the um, the Conor Ben situation coming out of the, the Chris Eubank Jr. cancelled fight? Can you tell us um, what's going on with with Conor and that whole yeah, that whole sort there's, of situation? there's a legal process uh, unfolding at the moment and and hearings and and so forth. But Conor Ben wants to get in front of the media. Uh, it's difficult for us because I don't mind talking about the process that unfolded but I can't talk about stuff that's going to obviously prejudice his, his legal hearing. So anything around that is, is over to him to, to speak to you guys about, which he will this week. But also, you know, from us, from our point of view, we want his case to be heard because whether he's um, found not guilty, whether he's found guilty, whether it's a no ban, six month ban, one year ban, two year ban, whatever it is, until that unfolds, we can't move on. So that's what's um, taking place now behind the scenes. He's obviously in a very big fight for his own career. Um, and, you know, you'll hear from him this week because he wants, you know, he wants to get in front of the mix because he's not really been able to say anything any, either. So that's what we expect to happen this week. 
Sure. As soon as I turned over, I always said I wanted to do stuff the right way. And I feel like from the get-go, I took the right fights at the right time. And this is, you know, like we say, it's the, the final box to be ticked. And I'm going to have to put in the performance of my life, but I'm more than ready. Yeah, I've not got a nose like this for no reason. I wasn't born with it, so I'm prepared to fight. But I do understand that, you know, I'm going to be boxing and I'll be using my brain the most. But if it comes to biting down and going for it, yeah. I'm ready. A dream of mine is to win the European title first, and yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really ready. I've been training, I've been putting in the effort. I've had no holidays, no free time, no days off. I've been working hard, and you know, I'm, I've got that kind of love back again. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to getting my victory on Saturday. But yeah, of course, you know, I did go back and I did think about retirement, and obviously, you know, father time is not on my side, and you know, every fight counts, and it, and it, and it takes its toll on you. So I did think about the, the option of retiring, but I felt good, and I felt like I could go on and have more opportunities and, and, and surprise people again, more than one person again. Uh, so I wanted to go out on my terms as well. I feel like I still want to have a shot, and I feel like I can get a shot to become world champion. And I just love being part of these events. They give me life. They, they, they breathe new life into me, and I just want to be involved in such big fights like this with, alongside Matchroom. Yeah, because we've been working really well. You know, I've got my new trainer now with uh, Gabby Saramento, and it's been a really happy camp. You know, we've been working hard, and I've not lost that kind of confidence going into the fight. And I feel that once again, when, you know, I can I can find that shot that can make me become European champion. I'm really excited, uh, really excited. So this is a big fight. As a boxer, you get into the sport to uh, to have the big fights, and and they're finally starting to come. So. Get this fight won on Saturday, and I won a world title shot. And uh, training's gone great. Um, been staying at Johnny Fisher's house and uh, been eating Chinese with him. That's why I've got extra extra muscle on the biceps. It all helps. And uh, now I'm looking forward to a fantastic fight. Kiko Martinez is a great fighter. He's a legend of Spanish boxing, like you said. And uh, you know you can't not have respect for him. Two-time world champion, he's world champion in his last fight. If I box him in February, it'd be for the world title. But it's October, and this is my European title, and I'll be leaving with it. Yes, yeah, so obviously it's, uh, we've been preparing for a great opportunity like this, and I have to say thank you um, for giving me this opportunity. It's always like a dream that you have when you go into the sport to, to fight for a world title. And I'm, face, I'm facing, obviously, the number one in the sport. And as soon as we found out that this opportunity uh, had arisen, then we were working even harder. But, you know, I feel like we've been working hard enough to make us ready for this opportunity on Saturday. Yeah, of course. Obviously, when you um, dream about getting an opportunity for a world title, you normally think about getting just the opportunity to fight for one. And then you go acquiring the belts. But in this case, you know, it's different. And it's a... It's a possibility that we could have never imagined, but once we did get this opportunity, we feel like we're really focused and we've been working hard, and we know that we have to go into it just as if it was just one other fight, and doing the best that we can to make sure that we do well on, and win the fight on Saturday and take home the belt. Yeah, absolutely. I think every fight at this stage is a, is a, a big fight. There's no such thing as easy fights at this stage of my career, but it is great to be back um, at the scene where it all started. Uh, I don't think we ever would have imagined six years ago that we would be in this position and um, headlining the, the likes of Madison Square Garden, um, becoming, um, a, you know, a, bringing women's boxing up to where, to where it is right now. It's been a phenomenal six years and, um, and I still really honestly believe that the best is yet to come. Yeah, I don't find it difficult at all to, motiv to motivate myself to be too quite honest. I understand the challenge that's ahead of me. Um, like I said, there are no such thing as, as easy fights at this stage. She's, she has everything to gain in this fight and nothing to lose. These fighters are always very, very dangerous. And um, I'm just looking forward to the showcase and what I can do again on Saturday night. The training camp has gone brilliantly. My mindset is still completely the same uh, as it ever has been. And uh, I just love the sport. I'm, I'm still as passionate about my sport today as I, as I ever was. And, and that's where the motivation comes from. Um, I'm looking forward to the showcase now. The best is yet to come from fight after fight. I, I don't live in past performances or, or past successes, but I, I do genuinely believe that uh, uh, the people haven't seen the best yet, and I can't wait to showcase that. It's great to, to headline another huge show and to have the likes of Gary on the, on the, on the bill as well. It's fantastic. Um, I used to train with Gary for years on the, on the amateur boxing team, so it's great to be sharing a card with him. And the likes of Ellie Scotney as well, uh, phenomenal talents. And you know, Key Martinez, George, Jordan Gill, just an amazing uh, card overall. And I'm just so excited about this fight on Saturday night. I can't wait to step in there and um, produce another great performance.
So Katie Taylor back in action, back in London again, a real superstar of the game as well. And I keep saying it, Anthony, but the women are doing the business well matched fights as well. Looking forward as well to, well, a big fight that's being prepared for in this very gym. Of course, Natasha Jonas, who's uh, looking to unify when she gets in with Marie Eva de Care on November the 12th, headline at the Manchester Arena. Paul Butler, who has got an incredible challenge coming up against a new way in Japan, yep. some, some challenge. And of course, we had to catch up with the man himself, Joe Gallagher. So here they are, all three. You're fighting again now, it's another unification fight. We've seen what Clarissa and Savannah did numbers wise and everything. So it's, it's come on so, so fast, hasn't it really, since you came back and turned pro? Yeah, for it's going from strength to strength. You should always look to move forward in any sport that you do in progression. And, and you know, you asked Jane Couch when she was in the game, what was, you know, the, the thing, the, the boxing and the sports at, like then. And she's made up that it's developed. And, you know, now, now that we're in it, that's the same. That When we leave, it should be developed. It should be moving. on. If a sport stands still, that's when you should be concerned. It's moving, it's developing. We've got the athletes to do it. Now we've got the platforms and the promoters behind us. And that's all we ever needed. We knew how good the sport was at its highest level. We just yeah. needed the world to see it. When you started working with Natasha a few years back, she came out of retirement, obviously. She'd had Mela and she came back to, to turn as a pro. Would you have thought then that you'd have... Clarissa and Savannah topping a bill, the O2. Mm -hmm. Katie Taylor now this weekend topping the bill. Natasha's topping the bill now in Manchester. Would you have believed that women's boxing would get where it is and Natasha's right in there as one of the, the pioneers? It's always to be wise after the event, isn't it? But at that time, there was no slant on Natasha. Natasha's one of the best fighters I've ever trained. Her dedication, her application, um, attention to detail was right up there very right up there so I'm not surprised in the success Natasha Jonas has had but like you say it's a knock on effect and it's snowballed we see that with the England football the lionesses the netball and like Natasha always said it needed more eyes on the sport and the fights haven't failed I think Natasha was involved in fight of the year was it 2000 2001 Terry Harper in Eddie's back garden then she was involved with a huge good fight with Katie Taylor um, and then this year if Natasha pulls off this win she's right up there for British fighter of the year and BBC Sports nominee for Sports Personality of the Year. Um, that, that, that's what I'd expect. But the depth, I see it with the academy that I have, the amount of girls that are going there now. Liv Holmes has gone on to uh, GB. Um, Paige has gone boxing for England. Ella went over to Ireland and got a gold medal the other week. So that's beginning to grow and grow and grow. And as you see, more and more girls are turning pro. And it was great that boxing had its first all-female card. And it drew so many figures. Smart marketing by Sky and programming and it drew a lot of attention let's hopefully now the same energy is in for the Natasha Jonas Maria Dekar fight it's a huge fight huge unification the ring belts on the line this is what we need to, to, to keep the momentum rolling obviously you say Katie this week and then Natasha and then whatever is before the end of the year it was only the other week we had uh, boxing royalty in Manchester Amanda Serrano in often get starstruck but I was she was uh, she's a uh, boxing royalty isn't she so to have people that come over to these shows and fight and watch and entertain. And like you say, the, the division, I think that, that there's world title fights coming up now over here with Ebony Bridges, Shannon Courtner, all them type of fights all the way over or up. So um, Chantelle Cameron, let's not forget her. She's in a huge fight coming up with uh, yeah. Jessica McCaskill in the unification in two weeks, November the 5th. So it's, um, yeah, women's boxing's doing brilliant. And obviously... Um, Carissa Shields, we've seen that fight, Savannah. The girls, the scene, the profile, the scene, they're getting the recognition now, and that's just encouraging more, like Savannah says, more girls and boys to come into to the gymnasiums, which is good for the sport. Well, Paul, it's just over a month now. Uh, no, it's, actually, it's a bit more, isn't it? I'm thinking December the 13th. Six, seven weeks we've got. Seven weeks yesterday it was. Right. So how serious camps, obviously underway now what would you normally do for a fight like this in terms of how many weeks just touching seven weeks now so we are full throttle in camp i have been for a few weeks now we've we've probably had like a 12 week 12. training camp even though i was in previous to that but camp's really been intense probably for for about five weeks now we're at a good stage sparring started so everything's everything's going to plan everything's looking good and it is, it's the ultimate challenge, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's plenty of belts on the line now. You've got a belt of your, your own. Yeah. You, you know, I wouldn't say you're the comeback kid, but obviously doing what you did, it's yeah. put you right back there. How do you, how do you view this challenge now? Because obviously you know a lot of people are going to be saying, well, he's going in the lion's den, he's yeah. got no chance and blah, blah, blah. What, what's your head telling you? I love all that. Um, I, I've always loved it. Uh, I've always been that person that 
that thrives under pressure. I love going into the Lions' den. Um, I love boxing in the other kids' backyard. Um, it is a tough task, like you say. I, I'm not daft, I'm not deluded. I believe it's the toughest task in boxing. You go through all the weights, look at Spence and Crawford. Everyone's Spence, I'm Crawford. Mm. I, don't, I don't know anyone out there, out, out of the boxing pundits, out of the boxing world that, that says our bantamweight in that division can be in a way. So I believe it's the toughest task in boxing and, and it's, a, it's a task that, that I asked for. It weren't, ex weren't exactly like I, I won the title and said I'll have that defence, that defence. Mm. Oh, and then I'll go for it in a way. I've, uh, I've ran towards this challenge. He's got two arms, two legs, mate. He's exactly like me. Power don't scare me. I've been stopped before. Um, it doesn't frighten me in the slightest. So I'm going to go in there with a game plan and hopefully my game plan comes off. Well, great catching up with Natasha, Paul and Joe there. And it's always a busy gym, this, Ant. There's always a real mix as well because you've got Natasha now, 38, looking better than ever. You've got young players. Fine wine. Yeah, the Timperley Canelo, who's coming through as well. So he's got his Very hands full, Joe, hasn't he? Very, and um, yeah, he's, um, he's got his hands full. And like you say, right from one end of the scale to the other, yeah. unified belts, fighting pound for pound number ones. And, you know, a young prodigy like Clark Smith just starting off in his career. Yeah. But of course, we are looking particularly this week at that matchroom card, Katie Taylor headlining. So what is the Anthony Million Dollar Crawler <laughs> bet? The, I don't know, it's a treble or an accumulator. Right. Ellie Scottney points. All right. Katie Taylor points. This is a risky one. Jordan Gill. Jordan Gill just to win. Ah. Oh. Am I being greedy? Uh, going Gary Cully will rate very high there. Uh, stoppage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am being greedy. So, yeah, that's what will accumulate. Uh, Gary Cully stoppage. Jordan Gill just to win. Mm -hmm. Katie Taylor points. Ellie Scottney points. And we've got to give a mention to your old pal, Vasily Lomachenko, who's yes. back in action. He's been out a while, obviously, with because everything of, that's been yeah. going on at home. Uh, so it'd be great to see him back. Good to see him back um, at the fair at Madison Square Garden. Always good to see him back. And obviously there's talk of him fighting Devin Hainer in the new year, which would be unbelievable. Um, I know that's, that's a fight that Bob Arum said he'd be very keen to make. Yeah. It'd be great if we see that. And then obviously Shakur Stevenson's moved up an yeah. frightening talent. So they'll be, hopefully we get to see some of those fights. You're not still in touch with Loma? I've not spoken to him for a bit, no. Yeah, you usually keep in touch with all your own opponents, though, don't you? Lenaris was a big mate of yours, He was, he was, he is, he is. But I think um, Vesely's had a lot going on back yeah, home yeah. to be uh, getting pestered by me. <laughs> Well, there you have it, the crawler bet. And of course, we've been catching up with the great and the good here in Bolton. And next week, where are we going to be? I don't know where we're going to be, but we'll be We will be on the road Abba for Dabby sure. Card, oh, yes. Um, it's Alpha yeah. Barrett, Manchester Alpha Barrett. Yeah. He's, tra he's, he's um, challenging for a world title. Yeah. Well, Chantel Cameron. Uh, uh, Chantel Cameron, sorry. Yep. Yeah. And I've got a feeling I'm going to catch up with Dimitri Bivol as well. He's one of my faves. So. Oh. Yeah, he's in action. So that's all coming up next yeah. week, but from Bolton. It's been great fun, Anthony. Thank Always. you very much indeed. But remember, YouTube channel, notifications, subscribe, do all that business. Watch Anthony, do what Anthony does. Thanks for watching the Lightweight Boxing Show. <laughs>